Hello, in this short video, I would like to show how to do a numerical Fourier analysis or fast Fourier transform or FFT analysis from some accelerometer data. This is a data set that some person sent me over the internet and asked me for help. So first step that we will do is we will load this data set into MATLAB um, using the load command. And then we see, okay, this data set has lots of rows and two columns. And I know that in the first column, so we will take all rows from the first column. This will be our time steps. And in the second column, there are the values of the acceleration and they are given in meters per second squared. Okay, so now we have these two vectors. Then the next step that I will always suggest to do is to plot this data. So if we plot it, then it looks like this. So um, let's also already give these axes there meaningful labels. So on the x-axis we have the time and second and on the y-axis uh, we have the acceleration in meter per second squared. And let's also give this figure a grid. Okay, and now we see measurement was probably not running here. Then there was some measurement here. The amplitude is a little smaller and then here the measurement ended. And if we zoom in a little bit, um, then we see, okay, that it is nice and regular data and that there is some, yeah, some periodic oscillation taking place here. And the idea or the task is now to find the frequency of this oscillation and to find the amplitude of this oscillation, but not the amplitude directly in terms of this acceleration in meters per second, but uh, the amplitude of the position change. So the next steps that we will do is from this acceleration, we will calculate the frequency, uh, the velocity, and from the velocity, the position, and then we do the FFT analysis. And then we will maybe do it in a different way and see if the results um, fit to each other. So the next step that I will do is I will create a script out of this. Um, and let the script begin with some clear all and some close all. And yeah, so then we have the same stuff here. And now we can calculate the velocity um, by integrating the acceleration over time. And this numerical integration uh, can be done with this cumulative trapezoidal integration. So we take our time steps and we take these acceleration values and integrate them over time. And um, so the first figure should be always plotted in the, or this first plot should be plotted in the first figure. So then I will open up a second figure here and now plot the velocity um, in meters per second. And this also makes sense in terms of the units. If you take the acceleration, uh, which is in meter per second square, integrated over the time, one of these seconds will cancel each other and we end up with meters per second. Okay, so let's plot this one here. And then we see, okay, this now is the velocity. Um, and now something quite usual happens that we get such a such a trend in the curve because if you measure some data with some accelerometer, there are always small, uh, there's always small noise and there are always small measurement uncertainties. And due to this integration, they will all add up. So if you have a, at the beginning, if you measured a slightly too high acceleration, then of course um, you end up with a positive frequency trend because this acceleration will add up and add up and add up and add up and so on and so on. Okay, um, yeah, so this will be the velocity so next step would be we integrate it once more um, and then we get the position. So we, now we integrate the velocity over time. We get the position. 
I will plot this into figure three. Um, let me see if I can scale the figure here in a way that um, I can also scroll up and down. Okay, so this is the position. This is the plot and now we get here the position in meters because we integrate one more time over t so one second will cancel from our velocity we end up with meter oops and this should be an n of course okay so let's run it once again um, and i will save it and call it fft analysis oh. um, not FTT analysis, but FFT, but okay. And then we see, okay, now our um, position here also got this trend because, yeah, these, once again, these small deviations and small measurement uncertainties, they add up. But if we would zoom in here into the plot, um, maybe here and maybe here and, and there. So we see, okay, there is this nice oscillation that we have seen before. And this is the oscillation where we are interested in what is the amplitude and what is the frequency of this um, oscillation. Okay, so analyzing the whole curve in terms of an FFT does not make too much sense. Um, b because yeah, there's not not so much of the of the small oscillation can be seen that you are interested in. So let's let's maybe focus on on a small section here, like where I've zoomed in, maybe from 15 to 25 seconds, where where this is sh shows this linear slope, and then maybe we should somehow detrend. Um, this data before doing the FFT analysis. Okay, so let's close all the plots. And um, yeah, let's say, okay, the, the, the time range for our analysis, um, and these are values that one then can play around a little bit with at the end, is uh, let's do the analysis between 15 and 25 seconds of this long data set. Um, and now it would be necessary to find the, the index, the number in this time vector where our starting time is and where our end time is. So when is the time, um, the first time larger than the starting time? And then we are interested in finding the, this first index and the same as what we will do for this end index. Okay, and this um, yeah, cutting of the data I will already do then here right at the beginning after loading the data. So okay, um, if we do it like this, let's see what it does. Um, okay, that does, does nothing so far, of course, because we have not yet cut the data. So um, our time now should be the time from this start index to the end index. And the same is what we will do for the acceleration. Okay, let's run it once again. So this was the acceleration. This is the velocity and this is um, our position. And you can see now that this slight change here, this oscillation that we're interested in, that this is now much more visible um, in, in the position data. So the next step that I would like to do is we, we need to get rid of this trend here. So what we can do with our X data is we can detrend it. 
and there's a command in MATLAB to do this dtrend and we just take our x here and then we take um, an order an order of a polynomial and if we look at this now it looks like at least a third order maybe fourth order polynomial um, if we if we detrend too much of course then it will kill our oscillation but it's it's more than a linear slope it's probably more than some quadratic or um, polynomial function to the power of three Let, let's let's try four so let's detrend it with four i will run it once again and uh, we hopefully see okay that um, now for this position we get something that is more or less constant over time fr from the average and where this oscillation that we are really interested in is highly pronounced so now we all almost only have this oscillation and um, yeah we have no, no no trend anymore that was the idea of detrending the data so the next step would be that we can go and continue with doing the FFT analysis. Um, before we do this, we should check that our time steps are really equidistant. So um, I will close all plots shortly and into a new plot, I will plot the difference between the time steps, diff t. And then we can see, okay, these time steps, they are fairly equidistant. There is a shorter range here where the time steps, where, where some time steps are a little shorter and a little longer, um, but this seems to be only like 1% one, 1 or so, less than 1%. So this is hopefully not that problematic. Um, so I would say, okay, these time steps are fairly, fairly constant in this uh, range that we are looking at. Um, so this is okay, but uh, what we need to do before doing the FFT analysis, we need to set the first time step to zero. So we will, from our times, we will subtract the first time step so that the yeah, first time step is zero. Okay, so now we can use um, this Fourier function here that I've used in several other videos so far. Uh, this takes the time steps and the corresponding values of the time function and it also takes a mode and the mode here should be sinus because we are transforming a continuous signal and not just a single pulse and then this function will return the frequency and the corresponding um, complex amplitudes so in, in terms of magnitude and phase or read an imaginary part okay so then let's do this and say okay it gets our time it gets our position as a function of time we will use this sinus function and then we get the frequencies and we get the corresponding amplitudes and then we can plot these amplitudes and i will directly plot them in a double logarithmic plot and plot the amplitude, the absolute value of the spectrum as a function of the frequency. And maybe also directly label the axis and say this will be the frequency in Hertz. And um, on the Y label, we will have the same here, the position in meter, the change of the position. Maybe let's, let's make this clear that this is a change on the periodic change of position in meter um, also a grid and plot this into figure four okay so let's run it and see what it does um, okay figure figure three works um, no, plotted. Ah. The, the figure command should, of course, happen before the plotting command. Okay, so then this is the result. Um, and then we see, okay, there is some spectral quantity and there and there and there, but there is one main huge peak, and this happens at 
um, 29.28 hertz. So this is the main resonant frequency and the amplitude there, uh, the Y value is 0.04179. Uh, so let's say 0.042 uh, or 0.0418 and this is the, the main, uh, this is the, the amplitude or the change, the amplitude of the periodic change of the position uh, from this accelerometer data. And then we see, okay, there is some second harmonic here and there's a third harmonic here. They occur at multiples of this fundamental frequency. This is the fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic and so on. But this is the main harmonic frequency. Okay, remember these values that we got there. Um, maybe I will... Um, export the cursor data to the workspace or maybe what we can also do is um, we can find from our spectrum here from the absolute value we can find the maximum so this will be our um, change Let's display this here. Periodic change of position. And we need to convert this number here to a string and also append the unit that this is in meter. And yeah, from, from the place where this maximum um, periodic change occurs, we can also get the frequency. If we um, say, okay, where is, where is this absolute value of the spectrum the same as the maximum value and then find this then we get okay this is the frequency index and if we use this as the index of the frequency then we will also get the maximum frequency and this would be also the data if i open this here that would be stored in my cursor uh, the 0 0.048 something and then um, the this data index and the 29 point something frequency so um, with these commands here we can get the, the frequency where this happens oops this was not the right command i would like to have this one here so Let's call this resonant frequency. And once again, we need to convert this from a number into a string and add the unit hertz. Okay, and then MATLAB is showing me some error here maybe because there's one closing parenthesis too much okay let's see if the script still works there is the there the, the plots and okay then we get the resonant frequency and the periodic change of the position from so what we have done now is we have read the acceleration, from the acceleration we have calculated the velocity, from the velocity we have calculated the position, from the position we have done some FFT analysis and from the FFT analysis we got this data. Um, so let's add here um, these are the results from the FFT of the position. So what we could also do as some alternative way is we could do some FFT of the acceleration directly. So let's do this. 
let's um, and we if we do it for the same time range of course we will get the same frequencies but here now we get we take the acceleration as a function of time and then we get the spectrum of the acceleration and i will also plot this in a fifth plot and just change my values here this is the periodic change of the acceleration once again in meters per second squared and i will evaluate this okay and then we see this is the fft of the acceleration we once again we have this very same peak here at the very same frequency but with a different amplitude of course because it's also a different unit and we have the same harmonics second harmonic third harmonic um, fourth harmonic fifth harmonic and so on M much much more of these harmonics are visible here um, and yeah remember that this is maybe the little more reliable and more precise result because we have not done any further analysis with this yeah so here we we um, did this numerical integration we did another numerical integration we do, did this detrending and finally um, calculated some Fourier trends from here to get our position now we have directly the FFT of the acceleration but what we get is the periodic change of the acceleration what we would be interested in is the peri periodic change of the position so how can we how can we get this at first um, from this last plot once again let's get this maximum value here so um, I, will, I will copy this uh, results from the fft of the acceleration um, the resonant frequency will be quite the same we can see i will just change this here to this different vector and now we can get the maximum change of or the uh, let's maybe at maximum here maximum periodic change of the acceleration and this will be in the unit meter divided by a second square okay let's run this one here um, and then we see we get the values from this plot uh, we get the very same frequency as before and we get this 1400 something meters per second square the same value that we can see here now the question is how how can we calculate the periodic change of position from this um, maximum acceleration here and yeah, remember what the FFT does or the Fourier analysis does. It um, says that our time function is a superposition of sine and cosine waves. So if we have a huge peak here, it means we have a huge acceleration happening with a sinusoidal change with this frequency and this amplitude that is given there with this frequency and with this amplitude so now we can do the uh, numerical or no we can do the integration we don't have to do the integration numerically we can do the integration analytically so what happens if you integrate um, a sine function um, if you integrate a sine function you get the cosine function which is once again a sine function but shifted by by 90 degree um, and if you have sine of omega t you need to divide by this inner derivative so we need our angular frequency omega which is two times p times f this resonant frequency so um, i will save this here into the resonant into something that i call resonant frequency and then just plot this here and so this will be our resonant angular frequency and now we can get um, and and in the same way i will also exclude this here and call this a max this will be our maximum acceleration plot this here 
or display it there. So we can get the maximum velocity um, yeah, just by taking the amplitude of this maximum acceleration and divided by the angular frequency um, because of this inner derivative or um, dividing by the factor within the argument of the inner function of this nested function. Mm, and this also makes sense. This is in meters per second square. This is in one over second. So some of these seconds will cancel. We get meters per second. And in the same way, we can also get our maximum position change if we take this and once again divide by this angular frequency. And um, yeah, maybe I can also plot this here or display this. The velocity will be v max in meter per second, and the maximum periodic change of the position will be the x max just in meter. And run this once again. And now we see, okay, um, we get this periodic change of acceleration, we get this maximum periodic change of velocity, and from this we get the maximum periodic change of the position, which is once again 0 0.018 something meters, which perfectly makes sense. And um, last final confirmation step, if this really works, is let's go back to the script here and let's calculate um, some Fourier transform of the velocity. So we take the velocity that we have got by numerical integration from the acceleration and also calculate the spectrum of this and plot this. So then this will here be the velocity and this will be in meters per second and I will plot this into the sixth plot. Now we have already quite a lot of plots. And see what it does. So th this last one here now is the spectrum of the velocity. Of course, we can once, this, once again see the very same um, frequencies there. And we also see this amplitude 7.7 .7 something meter per second. And this is also what our script here has calculated um, directly from this acceleration, assuming that the change of position happens um, just in terms of a sinusoidal function. So in this video, I've shown how to calculate the spectrum of some accelerometer data. Um, using the FFT function in MATLAB um, and how to calculate the maximum periodic change of the position from this in different ways by doing numerical integration, calculating the velocity from the acceleration, calculating the position from the velocity, detrending this. And um, so this is the first part of the script until here. And then the other way around um, until here, this is the first part of the script. And the other way around is we will um, do a direct FFT of the acceleration and then uh, do the remaining parts from there. Some final advice and some final tips if you want to do some FFT analysis and um, Make, make clear that your data is meaningful, check your data, be aware of what are the units there because MATLAB will just calculate numbers. MATLAB will not take care about the units. You have to take care about the units and the conversions yourself. And I would always suggest also, as I have done, to plot the data, look at the plots, look if this is meaningful. If your time domain function does not look very meaningful, if it's very noisy, you probably won't get a good um, FFT out of it. And um, use this. So third advice would be use this Fourier 
function that I've also used here in several videos don't directly I do not suggest to use the FFT function directly because when you use the FFT function you really have to take care yourself on what is what, what, what frequency range you get how to scale the frequency axis what will be the maximum frequency what will be the minimum frequency how many frequencies you get and so on and so on and this is all nicely directly done by this function you give time um, steps and time function values and you not only get back the amplitude you also get back the corresponding frequencies okay that's it